page 52. Diabetes Solution, by Dr. Bernstein. Part 1. Before you start. The body in and out of balance. Diabetes is the breakdown or partial breakdown of one of the more important of the body's autonomic, self-regulating, mechanisms, and its breakdown throws many other self-regulating systems into imbalance. There is probably not a tissue in the body that escapes the effects of the high blood sugars of diabetes. People with high blood sugars tend to have osteoporosis, or fragile bones they tend to have tight skin they tend to have inflammation and tightness at their joints they tend to have many other complications that affect every part of their body, including the brain, with impaired short-term memory and even depression. 1.2 Insulin What it is, what it does At the center of diabetes is the pancreas, a large gland about the size of your hand which is located toward the back of the abdominal cavity and is responsible for manufacturing, storing, and releasing the hormone insulin. The pancreas also makes several other hormones, as well as digestive enzymes. Even if you don't know much about diabetes, in all likelihood you've heard of insulin and probably know that we all have to have insulin to survive. What you might not realize is that many diabetics may not need insulin shots. Insulin is a hormone produced by the beta cells of the pancreas. Insulin's major function is to regulate the level of glucose in the bloodstream, which it does primarily by facilitating the transport of blood glucose into most of the billions of cells that make up the body. The presence of insulin stimulates glucose transporters to move to the surface of cells to facilitate glucose entry into the cells. Insulin also stimulates centers in the hypothalamus of the brain responsible for hunger and satiety. Indeed, there is some insulin production even as one begins to eat, before glucose hits the bloodstream. Insulin also instructs fat cells to convert glucose and fatty acids from the blood into fat, which the fat cells then store until needed. Insulin is an anabolic hormone, which is to say that it is essential for the growth of many tissues and organs. Too much in it can cause excessive growth as, for example, of body fat and of cells that line blood vessels. Finally, insulin helps to regulate, or counter-regulate, the balance of certain other hormones in the body. More about those later. One of the ways insulin maintains the narrow range of normal levels of glucose in the blood is by regulation of the liver and muscles, directing them to manufacture and store glycogen, a starchy substance the body uses when blood sugar falls too low. If blood sugar does fall even slightly too low, as may occur after strenuous exercise or fasting, at the alpha cells of the pancreas release glucagon, another hormone involved in the regulation of blood sugar levels. Glucagon signals the muscles and liver to convert their stored glycogen back into glucose, a process called glycogenolysis, which raises blood sugar. When the body's stores of glucose and glycogen have been exhausted, the liver, and to a lesser extent the kidneys and small intestines, can transform some of the body's protein stores, a muscle mass and vital organs comma into glucose. Insulin in Type 1 Diabetes As recently as 90 years ago, before the clinical availability of insulin, the diagnosis of Type 1 Diabetes, A which involves a severely diminished or absent ability to produce insulin a comma was a death sentence. Most people died within a few months of diagnosis. Without insulin, glucose accumulates in the blood to extremely high toxic levels yet since it cannot be utilized by the cells, many cell types will starve. Absent or lowered fasting, basal, levels of insulin also lead the liver, kidneys, and intestines to perform gluconeogenesis, turning the body's protein store, add the muscles and vital organs a comma into even more glucose that the body cannot utilize. Meanwhile, the kidneys, the filters of the blood, try to rid the of inappropriately high levels of sugar. Frequent urination causes insatiable thirst and dehydration. 
Eventually, the starving body turns more and more protein to sugar. The ancient Greeks described diabetes as a disease that causes the body to melt into sugar water. When tissues cannot utilize glucose, they will metabolize fat for energy, generating byproducts called ketones, which are toxic at very high levels and cause further water loss as the kidneys try to eliminate them. See the discussion of ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar coma in Chapter 21, How to Cope with Dehydration, Dehydrating Illness, and Infection. Today type 1 diabetes is still a very serious disease, and still eventually fatal if not properly treated with insulin. It can kill you rapidly when your blood glucose level is too low, a through impaired judgment or a loss of consciousness while driving for example a comma or it can kill you slowly, by heart or kidney disease, which are commonly associated with long-term blood sugar elevation. Until I brought my blood sugars under control, I had numerous automobile accidents due to hypoglycemia, and it's only through sheer luck that I'm here to relate this. The causes of type 1 diabetes have not yet been fully unraveled. Research indicates that it's an autoimmune disorder in which the body's immune system attacks the pancreatic beta cells that produce insulin. Whatever causes type 1 diabetes, its deleterious effects can absolutely be prevented. The earlier it's diagnosed, and the earlier blood sugars are normalized, the better off you will be. At the time they are diagnosed, many type 1 diabetics still produce a small amount of insulin. It's important to recognize that if they are treated early enough and treated properly, what's left of their insulin producing capability frequently can be preserved. Type 1 diabetes typically occurs before the age of 45 and usually makes itself apparent quite suddenly, with such symptoms as dramatic weight loss and frequent thirst and urination. We now know, however, that as sudden as its appearance may be, its onset is actually quite slow. Routine commercial laboratory studies are available that can detect it earlier, and it may be possible to arrest it in these early stages by aggressive treatment. My own body no longer produces any detectable insulin at all. The high blood sugars I experienced during my first year with diabetes burned out, or exhausted, the ability of my pancreas to produce insulin. I must have insulin shots or I will rapidly die. I firmly believe via comma and know from experience with my patients, a that if the kind of diet and medical regimen I prescribe for my patients had been utilized when I was diagnosed, the insulin producing capability left to me at diagnosis would likely have been preserved. My requirements for injected insulin would have been lessened, and it would have been much easier for me to keep my blood sugars normal. Page 54